I love you guys. Oh, uh-huh. 
his son. Then his talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and the work on earth is done. When the road is called to thunder, I'll be there. When the road, when the road is called to stood up, raised their hands, uh, walked around the room, they prayed, they, uh, they testified, they spoke, and, and uh, just gave God glory that night. And uh, we kind of like, just like we've been doing with, uh, with uh, the hymns, just, uh, just be in that moment of worship and just, just let God speak to you through song and just uh, in the moment of, of just where you're at with Christ. And so... Uh, as we go into these songs we've been doing, let's just let's just let God be God and uh, just speak just speak to our hearts this, this evening. Great is 
your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the songs of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. But your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Yeah, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Yes, your grace it is enough for me. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Cause your grace is enough for me. Yeah, your grace it is enough. Cause I'm Yeah. 
place where freedom is found. It's at the feet, at the feet of Jesus. Come and lay your burdens down. Just come and lay your burdens down. Just come and
power of God inside of us that produces a kind of aura that makes a difference in our culture. We've been looking at the concept of justice. I love the passage of scripture that God gives us is his definition of compassion, his definition of what it means to be a Christian, but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. There is a cause and effect of living the Christian life. I am changed. I become a change maker in my culture. And I want us to look at that as we uh, consider the Word of God tonight. Beginning with verse 9 of Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in zeal. Be ardent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. I'm sorry. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Continue, uh, contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. The two verses I want to look at tonight are verses 12 and 13. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Andy, would you pray for the reading of the Word of God tonight? Paul begins to flesh out the true markers of a Christian. Someone who is a living sacrifice, verse 1. It's incredible to see these layers upon layers. There are 13 exhortations. Exhortations are like someone standing on a soapbox calling people to join them. This strong urge. I think maybe light commandment might be a little strong to say. But if you can imagine someone beating the drum saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is the encouragement for the people of God. This is a true marker. And so every one of these, these exhortations is followed by an action. It's pretty neat to watch. One of the things that I know is that our whole life is a response from the love of God that has been poured upon us. I love the beach, don't you? I love the ocean. Some of you don't. Some of you would rather be in the mountains. But I love the constant, insistent pounding of the shore by the roaring waves. I, I love that. I mean, when I mention the ocean, the first thing you do is you think of the sound. As those waves, one wave after another, pounds the beach. As a matter of fact, on our 10th anniversary, Susan and I bought a conch shell. It was a part of our decor and still is. I know exactly where it is. You know where it is, Mer? It's in a box. Uh, it's in a box. Somewhere in a box. But you can hold that shell up to your ear and hear a mimic of the sound of that roar of that wave as it wave after wave just keeps coming incessantly over and over. And I mean, that's the sound. That's what you envision when you think of the ocean. I want you to know the Scripture tells us that the mercies of God are new every morning. Amen. His love is everlasting. And like the waves that crash insistently, consistently pounding the shoreline, so God's love comes over on us over and over. In this world we have trouble, but Christ has overcome the world. And I think it is good for us as believers to understand our lives are not only gifted with this constant pounding, but it's the way we respond to the wave after wave of His love and His mercy in the good times, in the bad times, in the happy times, in the sad times, that gives other people a view and a vision of who God 
God is and His consistent love and His insistent forgiveness for us when we don't deserve it just gives us a resource and a well from which to draw that we can give it back to others. Let me tell you, in this world, there is injustice. But in the life of the believer, we have more than enough of the goodness of God that we can give out. I think sometimes it would be easy to preach this passage as if it was how we can find hope in troubled times. How we can find help in, in difficult moments. But I think what this is, is a mark of a Christian. This is what they look like. This is how they act. There is a justice of God. He has given His nature to those who have already believed so that those who will believe will find a reference point. I love being a new Christian. Oh, by the way, I want to warn you. We're going to have open altar time after the service tonight. I'm going to warn you now so you can get your masks ready. If you need to go get one, get one. If you're not afraid, that's okay. We will social distance at the altar. We have front pews and open pews. We are all going to move from where we are and go somewhere and pray before we close tonight, okay? We are still social distancing. That's okay, I'll get you later. I'm going to get on to him. That's Curtis Lewis calling me when I'm preaching. What's his wrong? What's his problem? But when we consider this outpouring of the love of God, it has not been spread upon our lives merely so that we can digest it and ingest it, but so that we can reproduce it. And it, the justice of God to us can be spread to others. I think we need to understand how much we have been forgiven so we can forgive. Amen. How much we have been served so we can serve. Amen. How much we have been loved so we can love. Like the incessant waves pounding the shore. When I look at verse 12 it says rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. There are two fruit of the Spirit that are mentioned in this. Not that all these are different fruits, but two different perspectives of the one fruit that is produced in our life. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Actually, there's three mentioned here. Joy, peace, patience. So three of the words that are used here, which make up the fruit of the Spirit, that the Spirit produces in our life. Alice, you can't do it on your own. Blake, there's no way that you can religiously make joy happen. Amen. There is a gift of the Holy Spirit Amen. that helps us be able to produce joy in troubled times. Amen. There are people out there that are suffering, that are afraid, that are nervous, that don't know what to do. And we can find joy in our own lives and give confidence to others that Jesus has us figured out. He has a way for us and He has prepared a path and He will keep His children safe. And if we do die of a disorder or we do perish in a riot, guess what? There is a home. It has been prepared. Our story is clear. Verse 12. Rejoice in hope. I love the fact that there is the confidence of Christian hope. It's enough to give joy in any circumstance. We are not afraid because we believe that God has control. Here Paul links together two powerful theological terms in this exhortation that he gives to the believers. He says rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering. Those are two encouraging things that he recommends for our lives as we live in troubled time. There is hope, there is help in troubled times. 
and we need to find it in the presence of God and the production of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Here, he connects joy and hope. I like joy. Joy is for the believer. There's not an opportunity in this world anywhere for you to find joy. Occasionally, you may stumble into happiness. Occasionally, things, the stars align and we're happy for a season. I want you to know I laughed more in the last two days than I have the last two years. I had my two Kentucky brothers here and oh my goodness, what a mess. That's happiness. The stars align. But I want you to know I was not without recourse, Ruby, in these last two years of being able to overcome grief and challenge because I've had the joy of Jesus. The joy is not a concept that the world understands. They're only going to get it when they see it in us. The trouble is just an opportunity for us to discover the confidence and peace, finding God's perfect contentment in our life. As a matter of fact, if you'll notice, he says here, and it's one of my favorite points to make about Scripture, read joy. Read joy. Do you know joy is the moment when Christ came into our life? Joy is the moment that He gave us a child and helped us birth a human being on this planet. Joy are those things that we discovered at the altar. Joy is that rousing His moments that can only be felt in His presence that He brings joy. Rejoy is for times of trouble. Rejoy is when we pull from the past those expressions and experience of God in our lives and pull them back into the present. Because He has been good then, the burn, He will be good again. Because He delivered me from the mire, from the pit, as the psalmist declares, He will deliver me again. To rejoy is to re-remember His goodness when His presence is so close. Rejoice in and the second word here is hope. Hope is this ultimate blessing of God's people to anticipate God's righteous response. Hope is there is something a part of me that is bigger than my own strength, bigger than my own abilities, bigger than my own thought processes. God is with me. I rejoice in the hope of God. Now, I, I think it's interesting in Scripture that so many times when read joy or joy is used, it is in response to trouble. Please understand, we Christians have a response to trouble. We have a response to injustice. We have a response to tragedy. We have a response to attack. And that is that God is with us. And we rejoice that He always has been and He always will. And joy is always linked in trouble. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 3 and going, well, a long way, but I'll stop in verse 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, this is going to be good. If you're going to start that way, this is going to be good. By His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope. There's that hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected. I like that. I choose that verse for my life in this COVID chaos. Don't worry about me. I'm protected. Amen. And even if I am taken from this life, I'll be delivered into the next. Amen. And being protected by the power of God through faith for the salvation ready to be revealed in the 
last time. In this you rejoice. Listen, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Woo! We have hope. We rejoice in the hope that we have. Well, I know you don't believe me that joy and hope and trouble are all squeezed together. We are the only creatures on the planet that get a little giddy when trouble comes because we know it's going to draw us closer to Him. It's going to draw Him closer to us. And it's only proof to the world that we are not our own. Look at James chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. My brothers and sisters, when you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Joy, faith, hope, trouble. They all work together. Let's go now. Let's go now to Romans. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. I know you guys want me to go directly to 28, but this is what preludes 28. I consider that the suffering of this present time is not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed to us. Woo! We know that trouble is just a momentary thing. Trouble even is the, is the instigator that causes the victory. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revelation of the children of God. 20. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the one who subjected it in hope. There's hope, trouble, hope. Here we go. That the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to, to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruit of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for the adoption and redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Folks, God, through the Holy Spirit, is producing a fruit inside of us that is resilient, that is responsive to God in trouble. We do not run from Him. We do not become a hater of God when trouble comes. We know that He was created for problem. Or He, he was not created for problem. He becomes the creator of hope in our problems. There we go. Problem just brings him near. What a privilege it is to be a reader of the word. Verse 12 of chapter 12 of Romans. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Two exhortations. The first one is rejoice in hope. The second exhortation is be patient in suffering. I'm not very good about being patient for my hot dog in the lunch line. I'm not very patient when I'm standing to be checked out at Walmart. Even if I do have to stand six feet back and wrap halfway down the next aisle. I'm not patient. If I don't like it when I'm just waiting to check out, why would I like it a lot when I'm in suffering? It's interesting how that Paul goes right to the heart of the situation and he says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering. Folks, there is a God who rights all wrongs. 
And if we will be faithful to Him, He's already been faithful and will be faithful to us. We can rejoice in our trouble. We can have patience in and suffering. And here's the action. It's not enough. It's not enough for Him to say, I beat this drum and encourage you to join me to be, to be uh, patient in suffering and to be joyful, rejoicing in hope. I, I'm not just going to beat the drum and encourage you to join me around this bandwagon, but here's your action. This verse ends with an action of what to do in the moment. Persevere in prayer. Prayer was not just made for troubled times. Prayer was also made for us to keep a constant communion with God in the good times and the bad times. Persevere in prayer. Paul is encouraging us to join him in being patient in suffering, in rejoicing in hope. And his commandment to us his action command to us is to be resilient in prayer. When I think about the oceans, I'm always confident that it's going to be pounding the shore. I pull up the seashell and I hear that, that surf just coming and coming. And we know that the mercies and the love of God are new every morning. He keeps His goodness flowing. His goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life. The psalmist said in 139, I can't rise to the heaven and escape you. I can't plunge into the hell and escape you. I can't go too far to the east or too far to the west. You are there. It's too amazing for my thoughts. But have you ever seen the sea call? You stand on the side of it, it's like, this is too good to be true. This is crazy. This is wrong. I'm used to the, to the waves rolling in one after another, crashing through the shore like the mercies and the grace of God. But every now and then, the sea is flat. What do you do with that? That is just not normal. I think it's time for the people of God to rise up. God has loved us to love others. God has forgiven us to forgive others. God has given us good things and more than enough so that we can give good to those that are in need. When the waves become flat in life, and it seems as if this is weird, this is not normal, God has blessed us to be a blessing. You know, Junior, I, I was studying and I thought of the scripture that said in the early church, when everybody in the church was persecuted, and losing job, and losing families, and losing income because they chose to follow Christ rather than Judaism. I think it's interesting that the statement about the early church is that no one lacked anything. There is a justice of God. And even when the waters go flat, and things are different, and you can't explain the oddity of why it doesn't seem like His blessings are near and that heaven is brass. That's the time for the testimony of the church to come forth. For the church to be the church and the justice of God to spring from the well of the individuals who have been blessed so that they can be a blessing. And I believe there's going to be enough in this church to bless this church and many other churches decide. We need to let the justice of God reign through us in this time that the sea is flat. Just because we can't sense the
the flood of His mercies new every morning. And things are a little weird right now. He is not dead. He has blessed us to be a blessing. Let the justice of God reign. Find somebody this week that needs love and love them. Find somebody that is discouraged and encouraged. Find somebody that looks different than you. And smells different than you. And acts different than you. And do something that makes them know you got something on the inside that's working on the outside and that God loves them too. I want to encourage you tonight to just join me. We're going to just gather in these empty seats. And I, I, I really only want about three at each altar because we need social distancing, but I want them full. And I want us to just spread out at the front of this church where there's an empty spot. And I want us to pray out loud. I think there's something about the prayer of the people of God. Let's just call upon God to resource us with what we need to help someone else. There is definitely a resource of His goodness in our lives, enough in the past to go a long, long way. But His mercies are new every morning. And He has blessed us financially and spiritually. And with the Holy Spirit, He's enabling us to be people of joy and hope and have patience. Because those are fruit of the Spirit of God that's a work in us. Would you join me? And uh, you're dismissed when you are finished praying. God bless you. What a great time it has been to be with you tonight.